Hey everybody, welcome back to the PC Per Podcast. It's episode 652. This is being recorded on November 10, AD 2021. I'm Sebastian Peak. Jeremy Hellstrom. And it's I'm me. Josh Walrath. Sorry. And I'm still Brett Van Sprunberg today. It's okay, Josh. That's okay. That's okay. And you can find out Bye. when we go live <laughs> for events like this. I tweeted out three hours ago, in just three hours, we'll do something we, we only do every week. So tune in. And you could tune in. You could find out when we went live or we're going live. PCPer.com slash subscribe. A good old fashioned email mailing list. I mean, what more could you ask for? I don't know. How about becoming a patron of the PC Per Arts? That would because be nice. Yes. This is did, art. Did that it's, guy if, take away his patronage after my really blame <sighs> shout Josh, out? Josh. No. No, he did not. Oh. Oh. Well, no. That, Maybe no, he didn't watch uh, or listen. But shocking. Oh. Well, he could, he, could, he could go back and re, you know rewind. It's it's in the Thank in the you, account. Gil Weatherbeater. Yes. For staying the yeah, course. It's now time to go to Laramie, Wyoming and hear about what Josh ate for lunch. The weather is turning here in Laramie. It was windy, blustery, if you will. The temperatures ranged down to slightly above freezing. The combination made for a very, very crisp fall day, which is appropriate because today we had the apple of my eye burger. This is a unique one. It's a turkey patty. Turkey patty ground turkey patty topped with a butter rum glaze cinnamon sugar apples smoked cheddar caramelized onions and topped off with a sprinkling of pecans gobble gobble i know so if you if you enjoy your thanksgiving meal this was essentially it it had all the trimmings except perhaps stuffing and that would have been over the top but for a crisp fall day having crisp green apples caramelized onions cinnamon sugar yeah no this was a um, this was one to remember i mean it wasn't spicy obviously which i kind of like but it was tasty I finished the whole thing and uh Happily, excess is never enough. It's your new tagline, your slogan. Mm. It was MTV. My fries were good. And they gave me a ton of them. Like, they gave me the whole pouch full, as well as a bunch in the bag. And I couldn't eat it all. It was just too much. I had to throw away mm. a good portion of my fries. Because they, they were good looking really fries. Good. They were good. They were nicely seasoned, crisp on the outside, super tender fries. pot on the inside. Yeah, no complaints, none. Let's move to news and our top story this week happened just a few hours ago. Unsuspecting people started getting email notifications about their Steam Deck, and something bad happened. Well, not too unexpected, I guess, in current year. <laughs> unexpected? No. Sure it's a new hardware product. You're looking for? And mm -hmm. it's delayed for two months. Again. So far, the launch of Steam Deck, I'm quoting now, will be delayed by two months. We're sorry about this. We did our best to work around the global supply chain issues, but due to material shortages, components aren't reaching our manufacturing facilities in time for us to meet our initial launch dates. Okay, so the new shipping start date is going to be February 2022. No specific date, of course, but originally it was going to be December of this year. And then everybody gets their position in queue still. If you've pre-ordered, I've pre-ordered. But they're at this point, it's two months late. I don't know what kind of quantities they're going to have. Obviously, there's a bit of a chip shortage right now. A bit, yeah. And this is using uh, you know, and AMD solution. So, when did you uh, pre-order? I pre-ordered in July. I got my email today at about twenty after two, and I I had forgotten. It's been so long. I'd forgotten which one I'd actually ordered. I went in and checked, and I was uh, 
pleasantly surprised that I'd ordered the 256 NVMe version. So it would have been the one I would have ordered today. That's the second one up, right? It is the second one. Yeah. That's the one I ordered. I ordered as soon as I could. I was, along with everybody else, failing miserably mm-hmm. when it, when pre-orders first went live because they their system could not keep up. And when I finally got through and ordered it, I thought I was still in the December batch, but it took me like 15 minutes to actually pre-order the thing. Uh, anyway, obviously this doesn't sound like it's too surprising to anybody. And well, let's hope it's only two months, but... Forget about it if this is what you're looking forward to is your like Christmas present to yourself or someone else. It's not gonna happen. Yeah, unfortunately. I think I, I think my order finally went in and I think my delivery was after December anyway, so I really kind of didn't expect it any time all that soon. Weirdly enough, I also ordered a car in August and it won't be here. I, I we'll see which one gets here first, whether the new car or the <laughs> or the Steam Deck. <laughs> All the chips are still in production right now as we True. speak, so who knows? Yes. What is this thing that looks like... Brett, what does this look like to you for video viewers? Uh, it's, it's an office tower. Okay. <laughs> to me, I'm having horrible flashbacks to a G5 processor oh my gosh, with the giant G5. integrated heat sink yeah. inside of a power It's like G5. a really expensive paperweight. Well, it's an AMD Instinct. You're all right. Yes, well, no. <laughs> There was a big data center event that AMD had. Jeremy, you wrote a nice synopsis of all of it here. But please go Very through some of one. the highlights of what they had to show. What is it besides the instinct? I know about the MI200. Well, but that's do a family. you really know about it? Yes. Very little. I know okay. what's going it's, on. It's, it's, it's CDNA2 architecture, which I think is essentially RDNA3. Am mm-hmm. I correct in that, Jeremy? Five nanometer. Uh, the yeah, it's a, no, no, it's a six. It's a six nanometer part. Oh no, sorry, that's graphics. right. Genoa is the yeah, or Genoa. Yeah, the all the Zen Four stuff is uh, five nanometer. Uh, but no, the instinct is uh, it's two stinking graphics chips CDNA that each is attached to HBM uh, HBM two E memory. Um. They have really interesting technology in there, not just Interposer, but you know stuff that, that Intel had developed, but TSMC and, and AMD had kind of co-developed. So Substrate uh, Interconnects is, is now, and I say that with tongue-in-cheek because it's not really the substrate. It's, it's more silicon that's underneath that's embedded in, in the actual substrate. Uh, they're, they're really getting things going and so the teraflops that's that's coming off of this uh, instinct mi200 is essentially double of of what the uh the the nvidia a100 has and they're expecting it to be commercially available in early 2022 and in fact oak ridge laboratories is currently being built with not only these, but also, uh, I believe it was the, the Genoa um, Zen 4. Is it the Zen 4 or is it the uh, Zen 3 plus 3D Vcache? No, I think was it's the Vcache. Cache. Sorry. It's Zen 4 yeah. cores? Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, they're, 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 they're using the Vcache uh, epics, which uh, are, you know, they're being produced mass quantities now. Uh, they'll be available to the general public again in 2022. And we can kind of see that desktop parts with the 3D Vcache and Zen 3 will be available in early 2022. So AMD has a lot going on for it. And this, uh, you know, uh, server kind of platform uh, show was really a precursor to what we're going to experience on the desktop. So we're going to have six nanometer RDNA three parts. We're going to have third gen, uh, you know, Zen with 3D Vcache, which should, in theory, allow it to compete uh, more adequately with the recently released Intel Alder Lake parts. So AMD went up like 
ten percent. They 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 went over one hundred and fifty dollars per share. Which you think five or six years ago they were they were sitting below three dollars. I think two fifty eight was was kind of what it was pre Zen launch. I mean it was two dollars and fifty eight cents going up to one hundred and fifty three. That's that's some fifty nine time improvement. So if you put a thousand dollars down, you'd get nearly sixty thousand dollars back from your investment from five years ago. That's yeah, I'm kicking myself still, but you know, I was poor back then. Didn't have spare cash. Couldn't couldn't invest in AMD. What can you do? So yeah, uh, interposer stuff. Uh, interconnects, big deal. Uh, the three D V cache with uh, TSV through Silicon Vias. Um, how TSMC and them are managing that without breaking dies is simply amazing and it's not even solder micro bumps it's copper to copper um connections and i have no idea how they're doing that in terms of engineering it just is uh it's pfm pure freaking magic and they're doing it and they are releasing it in mass quantities here in early 2022 and we will likely see it on the desktop around then and again six nanometer our dna3 is probably coming up but they call it six nanometer cdna2 i could be wrong here but that that seems to be where we're going will we see a resurgence of hbm memory with these latest amd cards or will they you know kind of make sure things are not as expensive and and go back to you know just gddr6 or gddr6x we don't know but uh, you know, in terms of enterprise stuff, this is this is a massive deal, and they are encroaching heavily on Intel territory, and their performance is better across the board, and uh, they're 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 pushing against uh, Nvidia, and uh, now they have their own kind of programming thing like CUDA, except I think it's called Rockham, right? ROC with a little M. It's kind of their, their quiet. Cuda software. Rockin' Sockin' Robots. Exactly. And so uh, they're, they're not only providing the hardware, but they're starting to get with it in terms of software, which is something that they have been far behind with uh, NVIDIA, uh, especially in terms of how well CUDA has been accepted, how many people actually use CUDA, how the place that I work out, we're a total CUDA shop. Um, they, they've got a lot of, of mind share to chip away, but they're actually doing it now. So these were all really, really, really positive things from AMD. They're showing they're moving forward. They've got an aggressive roadmap. They've got stuff coming out, not only now, but again, they were hinting it at Zen 4 in fall of, of 2022. So... We have all these fun things to look forward to. Five nanometer uh, Zen four cores coming out, and we'll see what they uh, what they do with uh, with Vcash then with five nanometer. It's going to be interesting. I was going to say the the instinct, the power consumption does kind of scare me. Yeah, there is a reason that it looks that big because they're they're talking five hundred watts, five hundred and sixty, I believe. Yeah, and here is. We haven't really talked about this. This is the first multi-die GPU. Yep. If you look at it, topologically, this thing is, is, first of all, it's absolutely gargantuan, the overall size of this thing. It looks like two of the uh, Radeon 7s next to each other on one even larger... Uh, Interposer. Packet. Yeah. And it's... You've got multiple GPUs tied together with state of the art state of the art fabric and then you have a bunch of hbm2 e i believe it's 2e so it's something like yes. 128 gigs yeah per yeah. yes so each of those is 30 gigabytes and there's eight of them and the amount of bandwidth you get out of eight channels of that although Two i'm terabyte i'm guessing second. wouldn't there be some kind of a 
penalty between these? Isn't this like first gen Ryzen again, or is this something? No, I mean, over the, 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 infinity, the infinity fabric interconnect is going to be slower than the memory controllers. Yeah. But yes. again, looking back when they purchased C micro back in the day and people thought that that was kind of crazy. They have based all of their interconnect technology mm. on that initial older product, which for the time was pretty good. I mean, modern times now, it's it's considered pretty slow, but they've iterated and they've advanced it and they've taken that basis and they've... Infinity Fabric is, again, it's it's magic. They I just do wonder, really, will this trickle down talk to, about it much. to desktop? Do you think What's that, that they'll do, do multi-GPU on desktop eventually? Yes, absolutely. I, I feel like they're not going to do HBM on desktop anymore because it's just... It's like Intel getting out of the consumer space with Optane. It's still there for enterprise, but... I don't know. HBM uh, 2E is is less expensive than HBM 2. But HBM 3 is a thing now. Yeah, but it's also going to be priced a little bit better than the originals were. Yeah. Hmm. I think... So I I think there's there's nothing wrong with HBM. Go ahead, Jeremy. No, because I was going to say that there's nothing wrong with HBM. It's just that AMD as they want to do, adopted it a little bit early. Uh, yes, it did add some interesting things, but from the software side, there was nothing to take advantage of it. And from the price side, there was a steep, you know, bill to pay to grab something with HBM in it. I still think that HBM is going to be a product going forward. And obviously, you know, HBM three just dropped not too long ago, like hours, days, uh, so I think we're still going to see products coming with that. I think it was just more that, you know, AMD went a little bit too early into that. I don't see it going away. It's it's too neat of a product, and I think it's going to mature impressively, especially once, you know, the fab costs start coming down. But Josh also had something to say. Well, I, th- I think with, with HBM, um, AMD was kind of the right company at the right time, even though they didn't overturn the uh the world with what they had it did prove that this was a technology that was worth advancing and going forward with and actually integrating because nvidia uses hpm stuff for all of their higher end things and you know maybe with hpm 2e uh it's going to be at a price point that is much more suitable for desktop um, also, the things that they're doing with internet connect, uh, in, gosh dang, interposer technology, uh, some of these advanced things that like they're using where, you know, on the Intel side, they've got the Ponovicio, which has all these kind of interesting uh, connectivity uh, technologies that, that are sort of substrate, but at the same time, sort of small pieces of silicon and bonding and, and all of this. I mean, these are all things that they could do much cheaper than having a massive interposer piece of silicon which even though it's 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 based on a much larger lithography um and micron size is still expensive to produce just because of raw materials and times and uh if they can you know kind of get that smaller and embed that in uh, substrate versus just having one large interposer i mean you're you're looking at you know again uh, pretty pretty decreased amounts of money that you have to do to get the entire package and potentially other things with manufacturing to make sure that, you know, Hey, you bond everything to an interposer and nothing works. You throw out the whole damn thing. And so all of this is, is kind of part of what AMD and TSMC are working on and tells working on it dramatically. Uh, it's, it's going to be fun to see this next year, what actually makes it into desktop and what stays in the server and really who kind of blinks first when it comes to, hey, we need more memory bandwidth. And HBM 2E is much more efficient still than GDDR6 or 6X. It's going to be interesting to see. And, I mean, you know, Give with some, as uh, much wattage as GPUs take, uh, if you can save 5 to 10 watts on just memory, then do it. It yeah. might be worth it. Uh, I'm also curious to see how the the memory pool is going to work because essentially you do sort of have infinity fabric talking to infinity fabric 
And so I'm curious to see how well that's going to be executed in the real world. If this is actually going to be a proper pool of memory that everything just shares happily and perfectly, albeit as Josh said, it a bit slower memory than there's a bit slower bandwidth than some of the alternatives. But the fact that it's a complete ecosystem, all communicating the same way, are we actually going to see a big benefit out of that or not? And I don't know the answer yet. I'm kind of curious. Yeah, it's a, it's a real estate savings to go with something like HBM3 because uh, they are using what Josh talked about before, uh, TSVs through silicon v- vias and microbumps, and they get uh, the tremendous bandwidth uh, and the, the density through that stacking technology as well as the, as the ability HBM to get the, or, the or, or 3D vCache. HBM3 is, is 3D DRAM. So, I mean, that's they are stacking. Well, HBM, HBM2E is 3D frame oh, because okay. yeah. there, there's stacks of eight yeah. in hbm 2 e and uh yeah that's that's what makes it 64 gigs per uh stinking uh gpu and then two of the gpus to give it 128 gigs of stinking high speed memory that <laughs> yeah no i mean well, the uh the, the rest of it's i'm so amazed large. with the 3d v cache that they can do that with each chiplet and be able to get down in price so that you can actually do that to the desktop. I mean, it's still going to be a three hundred to eight hundred dollar part. I think the mm-hmm. way that AMD is going, but um, yeah, that just that amount of L three cash is 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 tremendous, and it's it's uh, we don't know all the details of, of how it works if it's like. You know, two banks of L3, or if the CPU somehow sees it as, as one L3, but uh, the the latency uh, uh, not hit is like in in picoseconds. It's it's nothing. By the way, uh, for I PC gotta let my per... dog out because she's whining it. Never mind, my it's wife true. has got it. For PC oh. Pro podcast bingo players, uh, add. 3D Vcash. Every time Josh says 3D Vcash, True. you can... Vcash. I don't know if you... I, I do feel that we missed out on one thing, though. What? We, we forgot to mention, it's 128 cores in the Bergamo. Which yeah. is totally not named after an orange. Uh, and was, I'm not going to spell wrong. That was up to 128, and they were initially Well, sorry, yes. 128 is the top. Is that 128 no, CUs? Yeah. Uh, Genoa is 96. What? Oh, Genoa was 96. No, okay. the, the, of course. Actual course. physical. Oh, that's right. We're talking course. about the, the... Okay. I'm. Yeah, the, so the server the CPUs. The yeah, no, I don't know. Fort Bergamo's is going to have uh, ALUs. That's nuts. But Bergamo's going to have uh, PCIe Gen 5. Yes. Which is going to be nice for them. And, uh, you know, in a later uh, iteration of, of Infinity Fabric, I believe. And, yeah, and they're they're... They're pushing forward hard across multiple yeah. technologies. And it's all kind of coming together at once. 2022 is going to be a very fun year, I think, for AMD. And to see how Intel plays against that. Because they're also moving forward at a tremendous rate under Pat. Pat has cut a lot of fat. He's he's pushed a lot of money into other things. You know, their, their quarterly financials are, are not as strong as they were. But they're kind of putting a lot of that money into actual work rather than just, you know, having a big old treasure chest of, of funds. So it's going to be, it's going to be fun. Well, if we don't see an advance pass and I'm looking at some YouTube comments, if we don't see an advance pass GDDR six for graphics next year, and if all these rumors about basically throwing power at the problem are true, where AMD and NVIDIA are both going to have like mammoth 450 plus watt graphics cards. Because there's been no well, that that may be coming down the of GDDR way seven. anyway. Yes. Yeah. No, because I mean, look uh, at it, the instinct, which, which is 560 watts of pieces de- designed to de- to be deployed eight by in a server. They're, they're thinking of fitting eight in there. Y- you ain't air cooling that. No, but That's, there are unique ways to. You know, get the heat out of yes, it. Isn't, uh, there are. Meta 
going to be one of their customers of these new yes ones? Well, that, that, apparently that's how they're launching it although today jensen was saying that nvidia is the heart behind meta i'm not quite sure what they're going to be doing nvidia's metaverse or like facebook meta oh right i don't know the metaverse, metaverse is, is being thrown around so much right now it's the this yeah, big no, it's actually really annoying, and that was sort of my point meta. was that you can't tell the difference, oh, okay. but it's it's, it's just meta. too meta. Yeah, yeah, thanks. You know, something that uh, both AMD and Nvidia are doing. If if we've looked, you know, if ten years ago we could have have done a kind of a, a simple things that you know CPUs are small amount of large logic and a huge amount of cash, and GPUs at the time were a huge amount of logic and small amount of cash. Well. We're getting to the point where these GPUs are just so hungry, and even the the latest cutting edge memory technologies can't keep up, and so they also are increasingly larger in terms of cash, and and we're going to see this explosion as well in the GPUs because you just can't feed enough data through memory buses, physical memory buses through substrate. I mean, interposers and uh, HBM helps a lot, but still, there's there's nothing better than you know, L1, L2, L3 caches mm-hmm. that are on the chip that you can access very, very quickly. That's that's exactly what Apple just did. They brought it all yeah. on no, the brother. SOC. Here we go. Hey, I thought you were going to say, what? and that's what AMD did such great effect with the the RX 6000 series. They they that's made not effective at all what use said. of cache because of a lack of memory <laughs> bandwidth. That's that's not what I said at all. No, that's what we're going to. I want. That's what we're going. Okay, let's pause. I want my L3 cast. Let's pause here (laughs) to have a word from our first podcast sponsor. If you've never accidentally erased critical data during a time when you only had a single copy, or if you've never experienced sudden drive failure, spinning rust, or SSD, don't worry about it, you will. I've personally been on the sad side of data loss and recovery during unexpected equipment failures, even in a data center situation. There's nothing more heart-stopping than losing data, especially when it's preventable. Today, it could be ransomware, hardware failure like I've experienced, or human error, which I've also unfortunately experienced. No matter how it happens, data loss itself could be a business-ending event. Think about you and your organization. What measures do you have in place to guard against disaster? Having a verified backup is your final stand. For business and IT professionals, Comet Backup is a fast, flexible backup platform which can protect your Windows, Linux, and Mac systems. Plus, you'll have total control over your own data. With Comet Backup, you'll be able to choose where your data is stored, including on-prem or with any of the leading cloud providers. Host the servers yourself, or Comet can host them for you. Comet grows with your business and is scalable for your databases and server data with per-device pricing. Test drive Comet Backup today with a 30-day free trial. Get $50 free credit when you sign up with the promo code PCPER. Start running your backups in 15 minutes or less at CometBackup.com and use the promo code PCPER for $50 free credit. We're back to talk about why on earth... Intel wanted Centaur. Uh, Jeremy, was it they for wanted to crossbreed it? Okay. Well, they have Ponte Vecchio. What do they need? Well, that's exactly what they want it for. At least I think, like for future generations of uh, Ponte Vecchio, because they're they're sort of ideas that just like how the Centaur was born, you just throw a bunch of things together into a room and see how it runs. Uh, but in this case, you know, Intel is saying that with, with Ponte Vecchio, and like we've sort of seen this um, with their wonderfully named graphics card, uh, that uh, AM, they're really, really happy of you know putting in uh, putting in the effort to make a, a single core to rule them, a single chip to rule them uh, from themselves, and then take whoever's going to offer them cores to toss in for other things. So what they've got from Via, which we haven't heard them in a long time is either IP from Centaur, maybe employees from Centaur. Like Via is very quiet when it comes to news releases. And this is no different. The Centaur technology website has sort of disappeared and it's under construction, but we don't know if this is, is Via losing the X86 license or are they keeping some of it? All we really know is that some of the employees that worked for the R and D branch of Via Centaur technology are now, going to move over to Intel. And the thing that they were working on for the last couple of years is a really, really low power uh, HPC core design. Intel obviously is kind of interested in challenging 
the NVIDIA especially, but, uh, you know, AMD, as we were just talking about, that, uh, you know, HPC market is going to be very big. And the people who can do the most with the least power are probably going to make a decent amount of money off of it. So now you're looking at uh, a nice new pool of uh, talent and possibly intellectual property to draw from when they're looking at uh, the, the nice melange of cores that they have. Ponte Vecchio, uh, Alder Lake, like obviously they know how to pull this off. They know how to do the immense cores that uh, or immense chimp design that AMD used to be the only ones to do. So it's, there's not enough info to really tell anyone what's really going on other than, you know, I, I think this is Intel looking at one, no one else can have them. We, we, we don't want the competition. We need them. And two, they may well have some really decent uh, deep learning technology at a relatively low power that Intel is going to be really interested in rolling into later on de designs of Ponte, Ponte Vecchio like chips. So, so here's, Josh is here's going to tell me I'm all wrong thing about, <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. Um, you're fine. But I think that what we're kind of missing is that Centaur is a fraction of the size and with the, um, the money available to design stuff that Intel does. And they were essentially designing parts that were low power, Haswell type performance that are available now. And they, they develop these parts at an absolute fraction of the cost of what Intel did with their thousands of engineers and cutting edge fab technology. And so the brain power and their design methodology at Centaur is really interesting. Um, they do so much with so little, it's, it's not even funny. It's amazing what they have accomplished with the R and D that they were actually given. And so, uh, yeah, it, it would make sense for Intel to, you know, maybe just keep them as a group, see how they're doing what they're doing, and, uh, you know, be able to make some money off of it. And, and at least, you know, for in terms of the Centaur guys, they can actually have products that, that people could buy as compared to when they worked with Via, which, you know, they were very limited in, uh, in, in where their products were actually even for sale. So it's, it's kind of, um, you know, it's a win-win for both of those groups. And it's going to be interesting to see if Intel changes anything internally with how they design things after seeing how this small underfunded group is able to really essentially compete with the big guys, AMD and Intel at just a fraction of the price. You know about AVX 512 and how it was removed from Alder Lake. Uh, here we have an article in Pharonix about Alder Lake AVX 512 in Linux. The P cores uh, do have AVX 512. It's not fused off. You can make use of it. And here's some you know screenshots of things that make sense to some people. But it depends on the, the BIOS version as well. And it may actually, you know, also depend on how early the silicon is that you have. If this is later actually going to be fused off or, or what. But it's interesting. It's just, I don't think it's surprising. It's there. It was in the design. The core design has support for it, obviously. But for all those, you know, cases where you need AVX 512 instructions. Yeah, when do you need that again? When you want to heat your home. Look, it's almost winter. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. So you're just running I, test bench. No, I got to tell you, I'm this this new Ryzen is really annoying me. Why? The, the 5800X does not put yeah, off anywhere near as much heat as the Threadripper did. It's cold Wait in this room. That's why I'm always Wait wearing this again. I heard the 5800 x was a was a hot box we just talked about this last it's week. internal temperature yeah. gets up into the high 80s but it yeah, doesn't put out that much i mean it's 105 no. watt cpu yeah not like my thread ripper that kept me in a t-shirt in this room with absolutely no heating and a window open cisco 10 out of 10 
in vulnerabilities. You know, it's their own rating. It's a 10 out of 10. Not, not vulnerability. in vulnerabilities. You mean no. Vul- vulnerabilities? Well, I mean, it's, it's a vulnerability that allows a command injection attack yeah. without authentication. Oh, well, that's and bad. It has the best PR excuse ever. Which is? Uh-huh. The actual quote from Cisco was, it was an unintentional debugging credential. This, this is literally what the announcement says. Uh, so essentially they're saying, yeah, we uh, left a, a, a root uh, user sort of in the hardware. And I mean, uh, the good news is that y- you can actually update it out. It's not hardwired in, but it's, it's there. And so, yeah, if you're a network guy that doesn't for some reason like going in to physically repair their switches a hundred percent of the time and has maybe set up a virtual access portal to it. Yeah. You're vulnerable. Um, yeah, it's, it's straight out at the, that they've got root. Congratulations. Hope, uh, you backed up and didn't have anything going over the network that was, you know, really important. And, and this, you know what, there's so many organizations that have non-important things flowing over their network, right? Yeah. And, and they also keep up to date on their hardware and their software patches. You know what, patching, especially network gear, implies the network needs to be quiet for a little while. And who wants to take the network down? That's, if there's, if there's, the, there's no better way to have a family meeting, this is just a corollary, there's no better way to have a family meeting than to go in and unplug the Wi-Fi router. You'll have everybody in the house in the same room inside of 60 seconds. Imagine doing it at the company. Uh, I don't have to imagine. Yeah, yeah you, it's tough to take the yeah. network down for patching, unless you can fail over but- to... Anyway. And the best thing is that there is actually more than that. That that was just sort of the opening salvo. Oh, okay. From there, you've hmm. got, uh, as you said, there's a command injection attack without uh, authentication. And there were two more that weren't quite, you know, a 10 out of 10. They were more like a eight and a half or nine out of 10, um, where the, the, the SSH authentication mechanism was just like kind of, yeah, whatever, here, have root. It's okay. No one will mind. So, yeah, if you're uh, if you're running Cisco, and you may well be, yeah, you might want to either patch or go Huawei. Let's break to hear from our second podcast sponsor this week. Do you need additional IT support? Are you looking for a company to bulk up your existing IT staff in cybersecurity, network optimization, or even manage your entire IT infrastructure? It's time you take a look at VPLS. VPLS is a managed service provider with 20 years of industry-leading experience and direct business support. They can even become your entire outsourced IT department. VPLS is a true one-stop shop with their own data center and technical staff to handle everything from data protection to server hosting. They're staffed with industry experts from all across the IT industries and can help you with backup and disaster recovery, help desk and IT support, or even a full-on custom cloud migration. Look at VPLS as one way to shift the responsibility of managing your your IT needs from your business teams and into the hands of the certified professionals at VPLS. They operate 24 by 7, 365 and can provide after hours support for your organization. If you're looking to build up your existing IT team or expertise for a specific project or blocking issues such as after-hour support or even wireless optimization, take a look at VPLS. VPLS can make information technology a competitive advantage for your business. Visit www.vpls.com slash goit to see all their offers, which even includes low monthly rates for co-location on all new customers. That's www.vpls.com slash goit. We're back, and we're going to lighten things up a little bit. Let's talk about a little bit, a a brighter subject, something with a little more color, like addressable RGB. And would you know that Be Quiet, of all companies, Be Quiet. Now, they had RGB effects added to some of their cases in the last couple of years. So this isn't a complete shock, but a RGB ring on both sides of these fans. I would say Be Quiet. I would label them as somewhat stoic. As a yeah, company. they've they've always had that kind of reputation, but now well, they've seen the light, the ARGB yeah. light. So we have 120 and 140 millimeter fans now 
with a, a, quote, one LED ring at the fan's inlet and another narrow LED ring at the outlet. So it's, it's very subtle. It's, it reminds me of the fans that are in those, um, like that Falcon Northwest system that I looked at. Because they, oh, you know, yeah. just a single ring. Uh, it's not like the fan blades themselves are lit up. So it's, it's a bit more subtle than some. Obviously, there are other, you know, companies out there that have a ring design. But it's a Be Quiet fan, so it's going to be really quiet. These are PWM yeah. fans. The prices range from twenty six ninety. There's a high speed version as well that's going to be twenty nine ninety. Uh, I guess I'm that's sorry, for AIOs. Yeah, I'm looking at the 140. So it looks like it, it ranges from 2690 uh, all the way up to 2990. But then you can get triple packs, which range from 7990 to 8490. So it depends on what you want. They have a high speed version and a standard speed version. I am assuming the high speed version is for radiators. Do they come I in would brown? Think so yeah, they come in brown. No, it looks like they don't come in brown. <laughs> Do they come uh-huh. in brown? That's that sounds like the opposite question. You I'm not seeing... I don't know if they have white. Some of their fans are offered in white. It looks like these are just black. But it's RGB. Yeah, that's, that's surprising because Be Quiet has a fair number of cases that come in a very nice white. Well, maybe that's the future. Yeah. I know white is sometimes problematic in manufacturing. but uh, It is, and it's tricky because... And what you're implying is that the white that goes on metal is often different to the white that goes on pieces of plastic yeah. or the different kinds As of plastic. As any Apple they don't quite fan matter. would know, white is harsh. That's why it took them so long to come out with a white iPhone 3G. Steve said it. White is hard, guys. Matching the white mm-hmm. from the glass to the white plastic, not easy. That's why everything's aluminum now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Chamfered edges and everything. Let's look at something really stylish. Marvel over... I know that home theater PCs aren't quite as much of a thing, even for enthusiasts, as they used to be. Because we have, you know, streaming boxes to do everything. But look at this thing. It looks like a piece of mid-century modern furniture. It's the... Love it. Oh, okay. I don't think I've ever pronounced this out loud. Ragin Tech? I'm pretty sure it's Ragin, yeah. Ryan Tech? No, they're Ray- no, that's a different company. Okay. Uh, I think yeah. they're Ragin. I think Ragin they're Ragin Pan Tech. Slim. The Ragin Tech Pan Slim. There is a photo gallery of some beautiful photography at uh, Tweak Town here. You need to go look at it. It's If you're not watching the video version, look at this thing. It is wide. It, it has a very, you know, it's a, it's not thin mini ITX. You can put a regular ITX board in here. It has full-size dims in the picture. There's no less than an RTX 3090 Founders Edition in this thing. <laughs> you know, in your home theater and PC. A, and a 240 AIO, I think. And, but only a little... It looks like an yeah. SFX power supply. You don't need Old. to, but you can. That poor power supply. Having to, you know... what? I don't know what kind of processor they're <laughs> that's using. A, that's a, a bold move. Let's see how that works out. <laughs> Cotton. Uh, well, it's all it yeah. all appears to be running in these photos. But this this is a delightful, Isn't it sexy. Yeah, that is. I, I'm is. telling I you, like if it. if you are just listening to the audio version, I mean, because that's what you do with an audio version, is it, just think of mid-century modern furniture. It's got those like classic. Yeah, angle, I was going to say 19, 1950s, uh, you know, uh, living room yeah. table. Or, or the the legs underneath the '50s black and white TV. Yeah, it looks you know, like a, a like an that. old stereo console from that yes. era. Or a yes. TV tray, or just about everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it looks great. Oh, it comes oh, white as well. Very, uh, very. I don't know if I like the white as much. With the white and uh, and brushed a couple aluminum. of people were panning it that it wasn't slim enough. They like I looked at that and I thought it was oh. about the same size as like a a knuck or something. I'm like, no, it, it, there's a 3090 in there. It's it's not so, the same size. So as a what nuck. you're what you're saying is the fact that they labeled it the Pan Slim. They didn't think it deserved the name Slim. Is that well, is that it, it is slim from one angle. It's it's wide and it's not particularly tall. But if it's component width. Then that's the right width for living room. Component Wait, components is, are what, like seventeen inches wide, something like that. Yeah. What is the here, pause at one of the of the arc like the architectural diagrams, the one of the, the uh, black okay. and whites there, right there. Where, there was what? one of them that you just the one in the uh, upper left corner. I was just wondering how wide is this thing? What is it? It looks wider than seventeen inches. Yes. 
Yeah, I mean, okay. Is it bigger than a bread box? <clears throat> it's definitely bigger than a baby's arm. Yes. Hmm. I, uh, I it's about the same size as a very oddly designed bread box. Like you could fit a couple of French loaves in it. Yeah. But not like Texas toast. I probably should have looked at the specs. <laughs> Features. It's gotta be there specs? somewhere. Endless scrolling. Apologies oh, to the video audience. Where are the specs? There's the specs of their build. Scroll okay. up. Scroll up. I'll, scroll I'll get up to the bottom bit. of this. I won't uh, scroll no, on the camera anymore. It does. Well, that's that was a 240 AIO. Uh, they did. Yes, it was. Used. Where? I don't see any. Yeah, they probably didn't. This is this is a problem I have with a lot of review sites lately. Is okay. I'm gonna grab the specs because people ask. You know, how big is this thing? What what what? can it hold how big of the cpu tower and people don't list specs automatically anymore here's the pan slim here's the website let's go to specifications Ooh. they have a tab for that oh great okay there it, it is. is 629 millimeters wide what is 63 centimeters in inches? seems very wide 27 no, inches not really. i don't know yeah <laughs> No, it's, didn't it's, they have like a twenty-four inch monitor sitting on top of it, and then the thing? What if was, it was a thirty-four? What if? Mm. How much is it? Say what's fun? You figured it Six, out. Six hundred and twenty-nine It's about two feet. Yeah, it's about yeah, two it is. feet. Uh, according to Google, um, that is twenty-four point no, seven six inches yeah. wide. What, what did like, I like just crap say? Math. What Josh, did I? You just... are absolutely right. Gosh. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, let's move on very quickly. Skin of my mills is about. There is a, a, a product that was what? puzzling to me when I heard about it. It was just amusing to receive it. Lexar, fine purveyor of you know SD cards, compact flash cards back in the day, things like that. I have a Lexar compact flash card actually. They're they good. they were good. Is, is the flash on this removable? I like, don't can you know. actually pull it out and? put it in something else and it stole, stores the data. So they got into gaming memory. I don't know why, but I guess maybe the margins are good on this kind of it's stuff. A growth industry. Yeah. Hades. Now you have to have an aggressive name. First of all, if you're going to get into it, it's got to be aggressive, even a little threatening. Hades. Like shark tooth or something. Yeah. The Hades RGB. So what is <laughs> Hades other than, you know, RGB gaming memory from an unlikely source? Well, I, I, I cover things like the fact that in Greek mythology, Hades was god of the underworld. So that makes sense. I was reviewing it over Halloween, so that made sense. Uh, and it's just kind of basic DDR4 3600 RAM. It's not even low latency or anything. It's cast 18. Timings are a little on the loose side. Ran Typhoon Burner like everybody else to see who made these ICs. And it just says Lexar Company Limited. So Ooh. either they're blocking it or it really is their own ICs. And uh, yeah. anyway, uh, there's an XMP profile. This is nominally 30, nominally 34, uh, 3200 RAM. It's 3200 DDR4. But it has an XMP profile for the 3600 at 18, 22, 22, 42, 64 at 1.35 volts. They have, of course, support for all the RGB standards for the lighting. They have their own software, which I have a screenshot of here. Unfortunately, the software did not work for me. Now, granted, it's a version 1.00.01 of the software, the Lexar RGB Sync software for Windows. But no matter what I did, how many times I uninstalled, reinstalled, rebooted, it would not do anything. I could change the colors, hit apply, nothing. So I'm thinking there was some kind of motherboard software conflict there because everything wants to control the RGB and every system. But did some quick testing. Uh, look, uh, the only thing that was interesting to me was, hey, you know, since I have this, it's CAS 18. I've not had 3600 CAS 18 before because everything I have is CAS 16 except for these CAS 14 DIMMs from G-Skill, the Trident Z Neo. So I compared the two. And if you just run synthetic benchmarks like ADA 64, you will find that you will get slightly higher numbers in a chart like this if you go to lower latency RAM. But what about 7-zip? And look at this. 
90,856 million instructions per second with the CAS 14. 77,579 with the CAS 18. I mean, you're, you're, you're looking at a 20% decrease in performance just from memory. So Just from memory are. latency. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, even though the the clock number yep. is the same, thirty six hundred, you know, for each yeah, of them. But, but the latency means uh, it misses the boat occasionally. Uh, here's where they yeah. really miss the boat: pricing. This is when I first started the write up. It was one forty six ninety nine. By the time I actually published, I checked again, it had dropped to one thirty nine ninety nine. DDR four is of course falling off a cliff. The pricing keeps on going down, down, down. They're just entering this market for the first time, and they are priced significantly higher than their competition. Because if you look up CAS 18 stuff, which is the value stuff, it's 99 It's everything bucks. right now. And this is a 32 gigabyte kit. So you can buy 32 so, gigabyte kits for oh, 100 99 bucks. For, th- for 32, uh, yes. 99 bucks for a 32 kit? Uh-huh. Oh, interesting. Every day. Oh. And if you want RGB, the, the prices kind of fluctuate a little bit as to who has the cheapest RGB kit that week. But mm-hmm. as of the 8th, it was 113.99. This is Lexar coming in with memory that has like mystery ICs and fairly loose timings has $139. You can buy CAS 16 kits with RGB for $139. You would just never choose this RAM unless it was like a great value. Because it's not like Lexar has this long track record for being great gaming memory that overclocks well. It just seems like it's priced on, in an unrealistic way. Yeah. Let's go to picks of the week. Josh started. Is it off. that time? It is. Oh god. Okay, so this is a newer product from the P3 people. It's the P3 P 4460 kilowatt E Z. You know, if you really want to know how much power <clears throat> your machine pulls or other appliances or things, these kilowatts are they're so good. They're great. They'll tell you the wattage. Apparently, this one kind of even tells you how much money, potentially. I don't know. Unless they're lying on the picture. Um, Go back to the money or Bitcoin. Yeah, that's a good question. No, 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 no. It it had had a list of all the things on it. One more up. There you go. Power factor lapse, high frequency kilowatt hours. No, I guess they don't tell you how much money. But anyway, all those things are right there at your fingertips. And uh, let me tell you, it was really useful because at work, we had a machine that uh, we built up with the Red Ripper 1950, and we put in two RTX 3090s. And when we, of course, did that calculator, you know, we should be able to handle the load on that thing with a 1200 watt power supply, you would think. Because other than just two cards and a Thread Ripper, when you add up all those TDPs and, and power it should be about 900 watts at max well it turns out this damn thing was pulling up to 1200 watts and it was actually kicking the power supply and cutting it all off and we actually had to physically reset it and we had to order a 1600 watt power supply so having one of these damn things handy is really handy this is why I need an editor for all of my talks. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. Yeah. All right. I agree. The cash so, handy. They're great. I have one, but it's old. and it doesn't have anywhere near these features. Yeah. And it was only like $20. Mine too. It was like 25 bucks. Yeah. All right. Jeremy, you're up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, He's no. back. Oh yeah, this is so oh, I not can't PC. This just came out. I think that we've mentioned this over a couple of podcasts. That why is Humble Bundle never done a Leisure Suit Larry bundle? Well, congratulations, it's happened. All of them, and assumedly you can play them on uh, your your PC now. From the, they start newest and go oldest, uh, but they are all there. It's it's horrific. It it should die, but no, never. Larry Larry dies a lot during the games, but uh, yeah, you you can wow. you can do this again. 
And, I, I yeah. first played Leisure Suit Larry in 1988. Oh, something, yeah. E V. It took me forever to get rid of that. EGA uh, graphics. Yep. Yeah. Took me a long time. Took you to a while to get house. past the place of of actually, you know, melting after you visit the prostitute. <laughs> yes, yes, it did. I, that's still a, a formative memory. You got so in my many young diseases at once. You just melted when you walked out the door. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or looked in the window, or looked in the mirror. Uh, yes. So yeah, um, that's now a thing, and I'm sharing it with you, just like you would a venereal disease. Oh, oh Thank man! You. I mean, it's leisure suit Larry. Actually, Come on. I think I played this on an Amiga way back when. Oh, it, it was came out on everything. It came out on Tandy, yes. Amiga. Yes. I don't think it came out on Kami. I don't think there was a C64 no, version. It, it came out everywhere. It just came all over all the oh, different Oh, there's a spirit. Oh, thank thank you, you, Sebastian. Yep. yep. No, he's all right. Himself. Brett, no, Brett, you're up. Yeah. Okay. So I was shopping for a good deal today, and I happened to come across this. It's a legitimately, if you think about it, it's a reasonable deal. 28-inch IPS FreeSync 4K name brand Acer monitor, $299. What's the catch? The catch is, is that it maxes out at 60 hertz. I mean, it even has FreeSync, but it maxes out at 60 mm. hertz. The only other catch here is that I think the if you click the specs tab in the middle of the page there, I also think it maxes out at a brightness of 300 nits. So there's a couple of downsides. What's, but, what's to like? Well, because it's a 4K resolution, which would be great for people who need a high resolution display, mm. but they're probably not gaming on it. So it is a very reasonably priced FreeSync IPS monitor. So people who are maybe editing photos, something like that, it would probably be a good display uh, for that kind of thing, but maybe in a darkened room. It's not a bad price for a 4K monitor, just maybe not for gaming. I worry about the 28-inch size because that was the first generation of 4K monitors. That's correct. Yeah, it's a but the 90% DCI-P3 suggests to me that maybe this is not like them just reusing an old panel. Oh wait, wait! It's IPS, wasn't that? Didn't that come along a little bit later? Uh, I mean, in 4K land. Yeah. Yeah. The the wasn't first. That a little bit later? Uh, yeah. The first were. Um, Either TN or VA. I know Samsung has a Yeah, so the IPS ones were uh, came on a little bit later, so maybe this is a maybe reasonable second generation gen. to think about. Yeah. Anyway, 4K display, 299, name brand, free sync. Not that that's really going to matter a heck of a lot. IPS panel, 28 I just wonder inch. what the low is. What's the low if the high is 60? Is it 48 to 60? Yeah, it, well, you wonder. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Why did they put free sync, a free sync you know, controller so, in this? It, because know. they could. They looked at it and said, well, it's an open standard. We can just put that yeah, on the box because yeah, technically it'll do like <laughs> 50 and 60 hertz. Anyway, this uh, the vendor's Woot, uh, also known as uh, Amazon, Amazon. You know, behind the scenes. Also known as Jeff Bezos, Inc. Uh, well, Jeff doesn't actually you know, work for the show anymore. Uh, no. But uh, so I don't know how long this will be around. So hopefully forever, yeah, if you want this sort of thing, <laughs> take advantage of it. How soon. long will 28 inch 4k panels be around until the yeah. end of time? This particular one at a, at a two ninety nine price, I guess. Okay. All right. I don't have a pick this week. I looked through my Amazon history and I'm like, no, I'm, no, it's dumb. I'm not going to pick that. And I just, I lost interest and then it was You're time to do the show. So I am a loser. Yeah. That's, that's beyond question at this point. Um, but thank you for watching. That's a little square, listening. right? When Sebastian doesn't have a square or a pick. Let's end the show officially. This has been the PC Pro Podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we'll return and do it again next week. Just for you. It's fair warning. Fair warning. Good night. <laughs>